This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And isn't a, an awesome thought to th think the God of the creation knows my name and your name and your name. He knows all of our names and he knows our thoughts and he knows the tears we cry and he just loves us. That is amazing. So in light of that, we're going to sing our praise hymns this morning. And we're really going to praise God. I want you to sing out, sing loud. We're going to start with, to God be the glory. Please stand.
you may be seated. And amen again. All God's people said, Amen. Thank you, Miss Leslie, and again, Miss Wanda and Brother Martin and church. Man, singing out those precious hymns today. Y'all sang it out with great enthusiasm and very appropriately, especially for today's message. I'll tell you that. I'm, I'm so encouraged. And so we'll invite you to take your Bible now and go with me to the Old Testament book of Psalm 149. Psalm 149, the last Sunday of January already, just one day left in the first month of the new year. And I just felt impressed by the Lord to just preach a particularly encouraging message from the Psalms this morning. As you know, we, we've been facing a lot of junk in our world, and, and we got, we've been bombarded with a lot of all kinds of negative news and conflicting information, and for the last two years especially, it's been stressful on a lot of folks, especially those who have lost loved ones due to COVID or some other sickness or disease and maybe was prevented to seeing them in their final moments because of COVID restrictions at hospitals and nursing homes, especially the first year of the pandemic. And so since last week, we got our toes stepped on pretty hard when it comes to our commitment level to the Lord and His church. I want to encourage you this morning and preach about praising the Lord. And I'm calling this sermon, let's just praise the Lord. Because regardless of whatever we face on any given day, there's always something to thank God for and to give Him praise. And I got the title from actually a praise hymn that Bill Gaither wrote many years ago that says, let's just praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts to heaven and praise the Lord. So let's read Psalm 149. I'm going to read all the verses. It's nine verses, so just be thankful. I'm not preaching Psalm 119 because that's 176 <laughs> verses. So let's read our text and follow the reading of God's holy, inspired, and errant, infallible word of prayer. Psalm 149, starting verse 1. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, and His praise in the assembly of saints. Let Israel rejoice in their Maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their King. Let them praise His name with the dance. Let them sing praises to Him with timbrel and harp. Though the Lord takes pleasure in His people, He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment, this honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. God, our Father in heaven, Lord, I ask again for that which I do not deserve and definitely cannot buy or borrow it, but I ask for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I need that unction and anointing today to loose me and let me go and preach as if I'll never preach again. And I pray that you rebuke and bind the devil and all his demons that may try to distract our attention away from hearing your word of truth today. And we just go ahead and praise you right now, Lord, for your will to be done and trust in you, Lord, what you want to do in this service. In Jesus' holy name, amen. First Chronicles 16.25 says, The Lord is great. And greatly to be praised. And the Bible is very clear that we as God's children are supposed to praise the Lord often. God wants you to praise Him in the good times and the bad times. Because regardless, He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I find it very interesting that the Word of God actually says more about praise than it does about prayer. Now to me that's astounding. Because prayer is asking God for something, where praise is giving God something. And God says a whole lot in His Word about giving Him praise. And so when it comes to worship and praising the Lord, that's something we must learn to do. And we will be learning to do all the days of our life. And plus, all, all this that we're learning down here is just going to be a continuation when we get to heaven. And my goodness, the type of praise we're going to be doing up there in heaven. So if you don't like praising the Lord down here, you're going to be very bored in heaven. Well, right here in the middle of your Bible, God's given us the Hebrew hymn book, the Jewish song book. For right in the middle of your Bible are 150 songs of praise. Obviously, God wants us to praise Him. So notice the psalmist whom God inspired to write this Psalm, 149, begins verse 1 by saying, praise the Lord. And he ends verse 9 with those same powerful words, Praise the Lord. So I want you to do something this morning. Say those three words with me out loud. Say it. Praise the Lord. Say it again. Praise the Lord. 
Now, I'll tell you what, that'll give you a lift in your spirit, won't it? I guarantee you. Those three English words, praise the Lord, comes from one Hebrew word, which is the word hallow, which we get our word hallelujah. And I want you to understand that the word hallelujah is not just a normal word. It's a word of excitement. It's a word of emotion. It's a word of exuberance. And God expects us to be excited when we praise Him. And God tells us the instrument that we, can, that we all have and that we can all play when we praise Him. Look at verse 6. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth. And that word high there means to lift up and to exalt. It comes from a, a word that means with volume or with noise. And so basically God is teaching us in the word, just go ahead and open your mouth and shout out a praise to the Lord. That's what we just did. So let me tell you in love, this is not a Pentecostal verse. This is not a charismatic verse. This is not Assembly of God or Church of God verse. This is not even a Baptist verse. This is a Bible verse. God says, I want you to open your mouth and praise me out loud. Amen. That means praise him whether you feel like it or not. God says, praise me. Now, someone would say, well, pastor, I don't like to do it out loud. I, I just, I like to do it in a very reverent, somber, dignified silence. Well, stop it. Don't hold it in. Let it out. I mean, it's okay to open your mouth and shout out an amen or praise the Lord because it is God wants you to do that. Now, some people say, well, I don't like praising the Lord out loud. Well, they don't have a problem cheering for their favorite football team out loud or go to a country music concert or a pop or rock concert that cheer out loud. You hear people laugh out loud, people eat out loud, people gossip out loud. Why can't people praise the Lord out loud? Amen. What I'm trying to say is don't shut it in, shout it out. Don't lock it in, let it out. I want you to understand what happens when the body of Christ comes together and really praises the Lord out loud. Oh, my stars, when we praise the Lord out loud, it changes the atmosphere and the attitude among us. When we begin to praise the Lord out loud, it'll wake up a dead church and it'll warm up a dry church. But most of all, when we praise the Lord out loud like the Lord tells us to do, it thrills the gates of heaven and terrifies the gates of hell. Well, God says to praise Him out loud. And in this particular psalm, He gives us three instances where God tells us as the body of Christ, we ought to praise the Lord. Number one, we're to praise Him when we're assembled with the saints. When we're assembled with the saints, look at verse 1. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of saints. That assembly is the company of saints, just like we are today. This morning as we have gathered here, every single one of us who has truly been saved, we are in the company of saints. Saints aren't perfect people. But we're sinners saved by grace. And God commands us as we're together to praise Him out loud. And one of the ways that we can truly praise Him out loud is obviously when we sing to the Lord together. That's why He says, sing to the Lord a new song. Now, as you all know, the church in general as a whole has taken a big hit, especially in the last couple of years since the pandemic started. And there are a lot of people who feel like it's just no longer safe to attend church anymore. But yet they can go to a crowded restaurant. They can go to a busy store. They feel like that's okay. It's just not okay to go to church. Because they listen to that part of the message. Don't go where there's crowds. But most people who go to church, and most church folks are courteous and usually don't come to church sick. And for the past two years, you folks have been very considerate and very cautious and when you, you've stayed home, when you thought you may have had something that could compromise someone else. That's just good common sense. It's common courtesy that we should always practice regardless of a pandemic. But most people, when they come to church, they either sit together as family or close friends. And, but yet when you go to the grocery store, you go to a big chain store or a busy restaurant, you don't always know all the people around you. And you don't know all the employees that work there. And you don't know for sure they're taking all the precautions. For me... Personally, I feel safer at church than I do anywhere else because I'm around people I know. I feel like that we're all looking out for each other and we have each other's best interests in mind. And I know for a fact, Miss Julia has been very diligent to sanitize every pew and to clean this building thoroughly every time we have assembled in this place. But I run across people from time to time say, so, you know, we don't no longer go to church building. We just uh, watch church on TV in our living room. We watch it every Sunday. That's what they say. Now, I'm thankful for online technology. Don't get me wrong. 
I'm thankful for that ability to be able to provide a church service for those who may be homebound, compromised immune system, and really can't get out safely. But I want you to understand something. There is a big difference between watching a church service on TV or by your computer versus being assembled together in the, with the family of God in the church building. There's just something different about being together with God's family in person. When the Bible days, the Jewish people understood all about the power and the joy of assembly. And they believed when they went into the house of God, they were actually in the very presence of God, and they joined together to praise the Lord. And I'm telling you in love, and I completely understand when people can't come to church for various legitimate reasons. And like I said, I do thank God for technology, and so people can see it and hear it when they can't be here. But there is nothing like being together in the body of Christ to lift up our voices together, to sing those precious hymns of the faith, and just to praise the name of the Lord out loud. And we get to do that each time we assemble together with the saints. And the good news, God tells us how to do it. He tells us to praise Him as we assemble together, as we sing with the congregation. Look again at verse 1. Praise the Lord. Sing the Lord a new song. And then the verse 3. Let them praise His name with the dance. Let them sing praises to Him with the timbrel and the harp. My, my. And, and I want you to understand. Do you know what the Hebrew word for sing means? It means sing. That's exactly what it means. God didn't say sing only if you got a good voice. He didn't say sing only if you're a member of a singing group. He didn't say sing if you're only a member of the choir. God says every child of God is to sing. Now that's amazing and encouraging because I really can't sing. I mean, I'm just being transparent with you. I got no musical talent whatsoever. But I love good gospel music. And I love to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I love the precious hymns of the faith. I'm not gifted to sing a solo, but that don't stop me from singing, especially when we gather together to sing together with the saints. And oftentimes on any given day, I have a song in my heart and I just want to sing it. Now, I'm not going to do a solo for you because I don't have the spiritual gift to do that. My singing would not be edifying. It may make some of you laugh, some of you cry, but I promise you it wouldn't bless you. But I promise you when, I, when we sing together, I mean, I'm enjoying it. And I can sing by myself, having a glorious time with the Lord. There are a lot of gospel songs that I love to sing because the message in the song gives me a blessing. It gives me a lift in my spirit, and it keeps me focused and energized in my daily walk with the Lord. You want to keep the devil off of you? You start singing praises to the Lord. Amen. So I don't sing to one audience. I sing to an audience of one. I don't sing to people sitting in front of me. I sing to the Lord living inside me. And the Bible says that's what we're supposed to do. Sing praises to the Lord. And by the way, if you're having a bad day or a bad week, maybe you go to the doctor because you just don't feel good. Let me give you a good reason why everybody assembled in this place ought to be able to sing when it's time to sing. Sing because you're saved. Just the thought that you're saved by God's grace is a good reason to sing. Think about it. When you read through the Bible, you see about songs of salvation. The first recorded song in the Bible is a song about salvation. When the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea in Exodus 15 and God brought back those waters and drowned that Egyptian army, that bunch of Israelites had a church service that day on the beach and they began to sing a song of salvation. The Bible says Aaron's sister Miriam played the tambourine and they danced on the beach. And the reason they sang was because they were saved. And I think about the hymn, Saved by the Power of Divine, Saved to a New Life Sublime. Life's now so sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved, 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 praise the Lord. Well, that's what David did in 2 Samuel chapter 22. David looked back over his life and he thought about all the enemies in his life that God had defeated, like Goliath and Saul. And he reflected God's defeat over all of his enemies. And he got so happy. For about 53 verses, he sings a song of salvation. He thanked God and said, God, you're my shield. You're the horn of my salvation. You're the rock of my salvation. You're the tower of my salvation. He just sang a song and praised the Lord because he was saved. And then the children of Israel in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Oh, Jehoshaphat was faced with all those enemy armies of the Moabites and the Ammonites. And nobody knew what to do. And the king of Judah dismissed all the soldiers, put them on leave. And God gave him a choir. And they went down in that valley without a shield, without a spear, without a sword. But they had a song. 
And they were singing, praise the Lord, his mercy endures forever. And they were all saved because they were singing the song of salvation. In the New Testament, when Paul and Silas was in that Philippian jail in Acts 16, in the midst of the mud, in the crud, the roaches and the rats, that would be a great place to bellyache. But yet the Bible says they opened their mouth and they prayed and they sang praises to God and God rocked that jailhouse with his power, freed the Apostle Paul and his associates and all those that were locked in chains. And then the Philippian jailer and his whole household got saved. It was a song of salvation. And then the last song recorded in the Bible is a song of salvation. In Revelation 15, when the martyred saints of the tribulation period, by the millions Stand before the throne of God and sing uh, uh, the song of the Lamb. They're singing because they're saved. Now, I may not know if you feel good or not today, but I'm telling you, if you're saved, you should have a song of praise to sing to the Lord. You know, we come to the church, we may sing all kinds of hymns. You know, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We may sing redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Or we sing like we sing today, to God be the glory and how great thou art. All those great songs of the faith, we could sing sing them because think about it. Our chains are gone. We have been set free because our God, our Savior, has ransomed you and me, praise the Lord. So the next time you come to church... Don't just sit there and just listen to everybody sing. Open your mouth and sing a song of praise and y'all do a good job of that here. Because that's what the Bible tells us to do. Praise the Lord together in the assembly of saints. Sing with the congregation. But not only do we sing, we share in the celebration as we praise the Lord together. Look again at verse 3. It says, let them praise his name with the dance. Now you say, preacher, did you say dance? Well, yeah, that's what the Bible says. But preacher, we're Baptists. We're not, we don't want to get carried away. I promise you, we Baptists are not even close to being carried away. The Bible says, praise him with the dance. The, the psalmist says, let them sing to him with the timbrel and heart. That means it's okay to have instruments in the church and to pray those praises and to sing them. Now keep in mind, when the Bible says, praise him with dance, you need to get your mind off the modern type dance that we think of. The word dance here comes from a word that means jump for joy. It is really a physical expression of praise to the Lord. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, when the Ark of the Covenant came from Jerusalem, the Bible says David got so happy, he danced before the Lord with all his might. The Bible teaches us to dance before the Lord. That means this teaches us that our praise to the Lord sometimes goes beyond our mouth. There's a physical expression, and I'm not talking about anything weird. I'm not talking about anything that where you lose control of yourself, where you fall out in the aisle and do all that stuff. Sometimes the praise from our lips gets into our body. We may want to raise a hand or clap a hand, move a leg, pat your feet. D.L. Moody said, praise is not praise unless it's expressed. And sometimes we can express happy, joyful praise that dishonors, exalts, and magnifies the Lord. Now, most sports fans know what I'm talking about. I mean, how many bodily expressions do you show when your favorite team's winning? I mean, I've seen people, and I know you have, get really carried away at football games. I've seen church people at ball games who jump up and shout, clap, yell, high-five people they don't even know and hug strangers with B.O. I've seen that. I've seen people who've lost their mind, lost their voice, lose their popcorn and Coke, and even lose their toupee jumping up and down in a ball game. Some have lost their maturity and dignity, screaming at some little teenager carrying a pigskin inflated with air on a grass field. Listen, it's okay to cheer for your favorite team. It's okay to have that good, fun excitement when you're having fun somewhere. But if you can be excited and dance at some ball game, then don't come to church like some ecclesiastical, liturgical, ceremonial, dried up, sad sack, sour dead Baptist are crying out loud. Shout out to the Lord of praise. When you go to the Lord, praise the Lord. You sing out with enthusiasm because we serve King Jesus and he's still on the throne. Hallelujah. In fact, God's our maker. He's our king. And all because of his grace, we're destined for glory. Think about it. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king in all his glory. And when we see Jesus as he is, the Bible said, we shall be like him. Hallelujah by that. So sometimes I praise the Lord as verbal. Sometimes I praise the Lord as physical. 
From Psalm 47, 1, clap your hands, all you peoples. People say, I don't want to clap at church. Well, the Bible says you can. The psalmist said in Psalm 88, 9, I've stretched out my hands to you, Lord. A clear picture of praise and thanksgiving to the Lord in a verbal and physical way. Psalm 134, 2 says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. I don't find anywhere in the Bible the scripture says to praise the Lord with your hands shoved in your pocket and your lips pushed out like you just got over a good hookworm treatment or something. Listen, nowhere you see it says cross your arms or fold your hands or play with your thumbs. It says lift up your hands and praise the name of the Lord. So I'm thankful that we are able to praise the Lord on any given day. But especially when we gather together to worship and praise the Lord as we are assembled together with the saints. And let me tell you something. No matter what kind of week you've had, let me encourage you to make this commitment. If you're not already, make this commitment to be better with your mouth and what you say and how you say it. I pray that often for myself. I pray, Lord, you know. I pray, Lord, to help me to know. To know when just to listen and not say a word. And when I do speak, Lord, I pray I'll always speak the truth in love. And may you season my words with grace. I want my praise to you, Lord, to always be sincere and contagious and not hypocritical. Today, there's enough gossiping and griping and belly aching and whining and backbiting and all kinds of negative stuff. I don't want to use my mouth for that kind of stuff. I want to use my mouth to edify others. And I definitely want to use my mouth to praise the Lord. Do you realize that the Lord God gave you your mouth for at least three things? He gave you your mouth to glorify him, to edify the saints, and to tell lost people that Jesus saves. And we can use our mouth to do all that but to praise the Lord. Aren't you glad that we can praise the Lord anytime? But especially when we gather together as the saints of God, in the house of God, feeding on the word of God, praising the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. But there's a second reason why we're to praise the Lord out loud. Number one, when we're assembled with the saints. Number two, when we're afflicted with suffering. When we are afflicted with suffering. Look at verse four. It says, the Lord takes pleasure in his people. That means the Lord enjoys it. He says, the Bible says, he will beautify the humble with salvation. Now that statement, um, that word humble there is the word meek. And it comes from a root word where we get the word afflicted. So this is a very powerful statement. God says to praise him out loud even when we're under affliction and even suffering. And we all face hard times. We all face those times in life that can be difficult, very challenging. Sometimes it may seem like the weight of the world is crashing down on us. Sometimes the burdens get very heavy and we feel helpless at times. And when you're down and you're discouraged and you're depressed, especially if you're dealing with a long-term sickness or maybe a, a disability, it may hinder you from doing something that you really want to do. It's not easy to think about praising the Lord in times of affliction. But the Bible says that's when we really ought to be praising the Lord. And I know humanly that's hard to do. It goes against our feelings because we don't feel like praising the Lord. But God says praise Him when we're afflicted. That means praise Him when we have problems and we don't feel like praising Him. God says praise Him. Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That means good days and bad days. That means when I feel like it and I don't feel like it. The Bible says in Psalm 34, 2, the, the humble, or that means the meek, shall hear of it and be glad of it. The Bible teaches us to praise the Lord in the midst of our problems. That's in any problem. And that takes spiritual discipline to do that. That's not easy. That's a lot easier said than done. When your patience is being tested, it takes discipline to praise the Lord. I mean, take today for, I mean, does, does driving make any of you angry at times? The way some people drive anymore on the highway? That's a good way to test your faith and your patience level. And today, road rage and anger drivers is at an all-time high. So to combat any type of anger or bad attitude, we better learn to praise the Lord in times of affliction. I have found that praising the Lord, listening to some good gospel music, singing a song, I have much better patience with the way people drive than when I'm not praising the Lord. I really want to have the patience of Job. He's a real role model. I want to be like that no matter what happens. Whatever might be frustrating, I want to be like Job and can I can truly say, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away, blessed be the name of the Lord. What a role model. I can testify from my own experience. The more I learn to praise the Lord, no matter what I'm facing in life, 
the happier I get and the more patience I have and the less things bother me that I can't change or do anything about. It's amazing what praise will do for you. It's just amazing how praise will just lift your spirits just when you need a lift. It'll cure a lot of your emotional problems because see, you can't praise God and complain at the same time. You can't praise God and be angry at the same time. You can't praise God and shout, I mean pout, at the same time. And if you've got a profanity problem, giving praise to the Lord will help cure that. You say, preacher, do Christians cuss? Oh yeah, unfortunately. When they're in the flesh and not walking in the spirit. But let me tell you in love, you can't praise God and use profanity at the same time because profanity degrades God. Praise exalts God. And the Bible says that's why we're to praise Him when we're having problems. And odds are, maybe you're having some real problems right now in your life. You may have problems at work. You may have problems in your home life. You may have a rebellious or wayward child. You may have some addiction in your family that's tearing you apart. Listen, God says praise Him in the midst of affliction because giving God praise in the midst of a problems don't make your problems go away, but it helps you deal with them much better. God says, praise him in the middle of problems, but praise him in the middle of your pain. Look at verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. And the bed in Hebrew is a place of sleep. It's not only referring to your private worship, but it's also talking about when you're sick in the bed. And obviously, when, it's, um, when we feel good, it's easy to praise the Lord. But when we're sick in the bed, that takes a challenge. We don't feel like praising God. But let me tell you what happens when you do do it. When you praise the Lord when you're sick, you acknowledge he's the healer. He's the great physician. He's the one who has everything under control. He's our refuge. He's our source of strength. He's our ever-present help. And our situation belongs to him. So the Bible says praise him when you don't feel like it. Praise him. Even when you're lying down sick, you can call out the Lord. You can worship the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. Without private worship, makes us hypocrites in our public worship. Your public worship will be enhanced the more you learn to do private worship. God says we're to praise him out loud when we're assembled with the saints. That's our public worship. We're to praise him out loud when we're afflicted with suffering or sick in the bed. That's our private worship. But then number three, and odds are somebody here needs this besides me. God says we're to praise him out loud when we're attacked by Satan. When we're attacked by Satan, look at verse six here. It says, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Now, I want you to understand, worship and warfare go together. We see that very clearly in the Word of God. Now, Satan has always wanted to be worshipped, and Satan's willing to pay for it. Just as Satan tried unsuccessfully to bribe Jesus to worship him, he'll do the same for you and me on any given day. Through temptation, through appealing to the weaknesses of our flesh, and I'm going to tell you, Satan don't mind people uh, being religious. Satan don't mind you going to church as long as you leave Jesus out and leave out the gospel. You know, and sad, it breaks my heart to tell you this. Some of you may know, but in recent years, some major denominations have not only removed all the references of blood and the cross out of their hymn books because they say it's offensive. They've also removed all the militant hymns from their hymn books. Well, I want to tell you, whether you like it or not, the church is an army. And the world is the battlefield. And there's an ongoing struggle for souls of lost sinners. And Jesus Christ is the conquering war. And think about it. We are like workers in Nehemiah's day. we got tools for building and swords for battling against the world, the flesh, and the devil. And our weapons for spiritual warfare include prayer. It includes the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and hymns of praise to the Lord. War, worship involves warfare because the devil does not like it when we worship and praise the Lord. But we Christians are supposed to be singing soldiers, onward Christian soldiers, marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. According to Matthew's gospel and John's gospel, Jesus sang before he went to the cross and to do battle with the devil. I think of an old-time preacher one time who shared a story about a man who walked to a crunchy church one Sunday. He got there late, and the service had already started. He walked to the front of the church, and the doors were open, but the church was packed. And the saints were singing praises to the Lord. And he looked over, and he saw the devil himself leaning against a pillar of the church outside the church building. 
He said, devil, what do you think about that praise going on inside there? You like that, devil? How do you like those saints praising God? The devil says, those church folks get like that every Sunday. But I'm waiting for them to come out because they don't do that on Monday. The Bible tells us to praise the Lord Sunday through Saturday. Why? Because every single day we're under attack. Every single day we face the devil, the world, and our flesh. And so as we enter this latter portion of the psalm from verses 6 through 9, we see this is really a warfare psalm. But we're not to misuse this passage. We don't want to take it out of context or misinterpret the, verge, the verses that talk about vengeance and judgment. Because as New Testament Christians, we are taught that we're not to be vengeful people. God says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So we're not fighting the Democrats. We're not fighting the Republicans. We're not fighting some opposing football team or any other team. We're not fighting a family member or a church member. We're, we're fighting a different enemy. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle this supernatural enemy, the ruler of darkness. And the good news, God has given us the full armor of God and all the resources we need to stand against the wiles of the devil and to defeat the devil every single time he comes if we just use them. God teaches us when we're attacked by the devil, the praising. Because to praise the Lord assaults the gates of hell. If you want the devil and the demons to tremble, praise the name of Jesus out loud. The devil don't like it when you praise the Lord out loud. And if you ain't heard anything else in this sermon, hear this. God tells us to praise him out loud for a reason. Besides the fact the devil and the demons can't stand it, they don't like it. But this is why when someone says, well, pastor... I, I love the Lord, but I just don't want to do it out loud. I'd just rather do it silently in my heart. Well, let me tell you why. It's good to open your mouth. It's good to speak out, out loud, a praise to the Lord. Because listen, the devil cannot read your thoughts like God can. The devil is not omniscient like God. Don't give the devil more credit than he's due. Yeah, the devil may put bad thoughts in your mind, but he can't read them. The only one who can read your thoughts is God. Psalm 94, 11 says, The Lord knows the thoughts of man. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, when they lowered the paralytic man down through the roof and the Pharisees was criticizing Jesus, the Bible says Jesus knew their thoughts before they, they even said it. Only God knows our thoughts. So this is good. And I pray this will help somebody like it's helped me. The devil cannot read your mind, but he can hear your words. So listen to me. He can't read your mind, but he can hear your words you speak out loud. And the Bible tells us in Psalm 22, the Lord is enthroned by the praises of his people. And when we are under attack by the devil and we speak out loud a word of, a word of praise to the Lord, when we speak that word of praise, when we sing the songs of praise to the Lord, when we lift up the name of Jesus out loud, the devil's allergic to that. He can't stand that. And the devil will not hang around an atmosphere of praise. You want to get the devil off your back? Praise the Lord. He'll run every time. Think about it. When you're in the midst of the battle, praise the Lord. When you're doing that, you're trusting God to win the battle for you. That's why... I think Bill Gates wrote this, let's just praise the Lord. Praising the Lord not only assaults the gates of hell, but it adorns the gates of heaven. So look at verse 9. It says, to execute on them the written judgment, this honor. You might want to circle or underline that word honor. This honor have all his saints praise the Lord. That word honor means adorn, ornaments of glory. In other words, it's a badge of honor to really give the Lord praise. And every time you praise the name of Jesus out loud, you're slapping the devil in the face. You want to hit someone? Hit the devil. Praise the Lord. He can't stand it. He'll duck. He trembles at the name of Jesus. And God has declared in writing that the day of the Lord's going to come when he's going to send judgment to this world on all those who have rejected Christ and all those who have chosen to worship the devil. And so I'm going to tell you, as times get close, Closer and closer to the tribulation period that's coming. It may seem like God's people are on the losing end. But I'm going to tell you something. When you read the back of this book, we're not on the losing end. 
We as born again members of God's family, we're going to conquer the enemy and we're going to reign victoriously when Jesus Christ, when he comes. Today, the sword belongs to human government and its agents. But God's servants don't wield a sword like, like, uh, like the enemy does. And the Bible says the day of the Lord's going to come like a thief in the night. And then Christ will gird his sword and he's going to ride prosperously in triumph victory when he comes. But until then, the church, God's people, the saints must take worship very serious and realize that worship is part of believers' spiritual warfare. To ignore worship, to ignore praise, to trivialize it, to turn it into entertainment, to make it a, just a routine activity is play right into the hands of the devil. It is a high honor to praise the Lord. It is a high honor to serve in the Lord's army as worshiping warriors who's not ashamed of the gospel and not afraid to give the Lord Jesus praise. Let me encourage you. If you get a hold of this teaching in the Bible, especially if you have a problem being negative in your spirit, when you praise God out loud, you're inviting heaven into your situation. When you praise God out loud, you're asking God to come down and to lift your burden and to give you victory. When you praise the Lord out loud, you're bringing God into your circumstances. And just remember, when you praise the Lord, it adorns heaven. And God loves it. God takes great pleasure when his people praise him. And so that teaches us in our worship, we are sing out. And open our heart and open our lips and just praise the Lord out loud. The Bible says when I praise the Lord out loud, it afflicts my enemy. He can't stand it. So I say just what Bill Gaither says. Let's just praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts to heaven and praise the Lord. Because when I raise a hallelujah, praise to my Lord, I know that my enemy cannot stand it, but heaven comes to fight for me. And when Jesus, you're a winner every time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Listen to me close. I'm going to ask our pianist and music team to get ready for our invitational hymn and Maybe today some of you might want to come and stand or kneel at the altar and just give the Lord a, a word of praise. Yes, you could do it at your pew, but you might want to just come to the altar and just lay a burden down and leave here today lifted in your spirit. Let the gates of hell know today that you are a child of God and you're going to give your Lord praise and ask God to take that burden from you. Don't worry what somebody may think. It's not really important what other people think. It's what's important. It's what God knows. And if God is calling you to, to make a decision, then you need to make it. You may be here today and you've never been saved. Listen, I will never assume everybody here is saved. But you're not going to heaven unless you're saved. It's not about church membership. It's not about being a good person. It's about knowing Jesus Christ. Do you know him? Do you know for sure your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life? If you don't know for sure, listen, don't, don't. Don't leave here today unsure. You can be sure. I would be more than happy to help you with that. I'm confident because of what the Bible teaches. It's not about us. It's not about what we do or don't do. It's what Jesus did for us. And he paid it all. So do you know him? And if you've been saved, have you been baptized by immersion? As the Bible teaches, that's part of your obedience. Maybe God's leading you to become a member here. You might want to, you might want to come by a statement of faith or by letter. Or maybe you just want to come and you do want to just stand and kneel at the altar and just say, Lord, I just want to give you some praise. Lord, I realize I've, I've allowed the enemy to cause me to lose focus. I've allowed my times of affliction and I've allowed the attacks of the devil to give me a bitter spirit. And Lord, I need to, I need to resist that and I need to give you praise. I'm going to tell you, when you're battling anything, if you praise the Lord, you will see, I promise you, you'll see how you can deal with it much easier. Your patience level increase and your ability to speak the truth in love and to season your words with grace really flows much, much better when you just praise the Lord. I'm going to pray and we'll have our hymn of invitation. When you stand and begin singing, if you need to come, you come on the very first verse. Father, in Jesus' name, O Holy Spirit, thank you for this encouraging word of truth Lord, we do want to praise you, not only in the good times, but the bad times, because, Lord, you're still God. You never leave us nor forsake us. And thank you, Lord, for giving us the tools and the weapons 
to stand against the wiles of the devil who's always looking for an opportunity to beat us down. Lord, may we not be guilty of just praising you just on Sunday. May we praise you every single day because we realize when we go outside these walls, we want the devil to flee, not be coming to us. We want to resist him in Jesus' name and say your name out loud where he cannot even come close. He'll tremble because, Lord, you are God and there is no other. So I pray right now any decisions need to be made will be made for your will and your glory. And we give you praise as we sing this hymn of invitation together. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>